Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. This video is a part of the training course on unsteady heat transfer equation. We initiated this particular training course few months back. Going to a good response, we are resuming this course again. In today's video, we are learning about a new scheme that is BTCS, that means backward time central space used for solving unsteady heat conduction equation in one dimension. In the last video, we talked about FTCS, that is forward time central space scheme and we mentioned that that FTCS methodology was explicit method because we can solve for the temperature at any grid points from the initial condition and the boundary conditions and that is why it was explicit but in BTCS methodology in BTCS scheme we can't solve accordingly and that is why this is not an explicit method this is basically called an implicit method so let us go ahead with the problem statement again so this is our equation that is unsteady heat conduction equation in one dimension. I just tried to draw a simple geometry. So we are basically working in this geometry where we have a linear solution space because of the one dimension and the temperature at both the ends are known and in this particular case we keep the temperature at both the ends zero and the initial condition is Temperature initially at any point will be given by this formula that is 4x minus 4x square. So this is arbitrarily chosen. You can actually take any kind of initial uh, conditions and you can proceed with your solution. So initially let us try to visualize how exactly numerical scheme works. So here we have a solution space and Basically, this is a one dimensional space, but why we are having two dimensional grid point because we, we are solving uh, for a time dependent equation. So in the y direction, we show the time marching or the y direction is the time marching direction and the x direction stands for the space. That means different points in this x direction uh, let me take a pointer it will be easier to show so in this direction that is the x direction each point indicates those points on the actual solution space now when we move along y direction we actually increase our temperature say not temperature increase our time so here it was the temperature at initial T0 time. When we go up here, it is the temperature for at this location only, but at an elevated time, say 0 plus delta T. If we move another step, it goes to 0 plus 2 delta T. If we go here, it is 3 delta T. So accordingly, as we keep on uh, going in the y direction, we march in time. Similarly, as we go in the x direction, we increment the position. So this is say x equal to 0 position. This is delta x. This point totally 2 delta x, 3 delta x, 4 delta x and accordingly. So any point if you choose, suppose here that this point will be uh, given by the coordinate. So the coordinate you can see y coordinate is 1, 2, 3, 4. So it is 4 delta t and x is 1, 2, 3, 4. So x is also 4 delta t. So that point was 4 delta x comma 4 delta t. That means you are calculating temperature at a time step 4 delta t and at a space 4 delta x. So similarly at different points if you hover through it will indicate certain space coordinate and certain time coordinate. If you want to solve the entire equation, that basically means you want to know the information of temperature at any point, say this particular point, at different time steps. So when we solve for all the grid points, we will have that 
physical information you choose any space spatial point and you choose any time step you will be able to tell the temperature at that particular space and that particular time so this is about the basic thing now let us try to understand the initial condition so what i have done is i went to the excel sheet and i divided the entire solution space that is 0 to 1 into small segments 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and up to 0 0.1 and I have actually calculated the temperature at those spatial points and I have seen that this is the temperature distribution I have plotted it so you can see from this particular plot that the temperature is looking like a parabolic a parabola because this is an equation of a parabola so it would obviously would be a parabolic shape now in my previous video i have talked many times so when a temperature is high here and low here that means the heat will be flowing from this position to this particular position and the same happens in the right hand side also this is at higher temperature and this is at lower temperature so heat should also flow from the, this position to that position that means gradient is there in both the right hand and left hand direction so heat will keep flowing in both right and left hand directions and it will try to equilibrate over time and at a very elevated time step one situation will be uh, will come when the temperature will become equi at equi temperature will come to an equilibrium so now let us talk about our scheme that is btcs that is a backward time and central space so you can see i have taken two two lines the red line indicates at an elevated time step say t plus delta t and the green line indicates the points at a past time that is say t time so here t is the past time and t plus delta t is the new time now when you solve any numerical scheme what you do you solve for the in so those are the those are the points coming from the boundary and initial conditions so as i have shown that the boundary conditions were zero at both the ends so any point in the left hand side is zero any point in the right hand side is also zero so what does those different points in the right hand side indicates it indicates the temperature at the end of the bar or the line for different time steps so at different time steps also the temperature will always remain at zero and same in the left hand side now at this position the temperature at initial time will be determined by this equation 4x minus 4x square now you will be solving so those points are basically known now you will be solving for the first line once the information of this first line is available then you will be going to the next line and you will be solving for each grid points and you will keep doing it and you will reach to here and then you will be having information of all the points so once we calculate temperature along this line this becomes the past line or which is indicated here by the green line and now i want to calculate say temperature along this line so this will become a new time step for me so all those things are unknown that means this is at x time t plus delta t so this is unknown this point is at x plus delta x at t plus delta t time this is also unknown similarly this is at x minus delta x so all are unknown only this point is known we are assuming this point is known because we have calculated the temperature at every location at a past time which is t now when you discretize this is the first order time derivative so here you can see t x comma t plus delta t 
that means this particular point minus t x t so this is the point so we are taking a difference between these two and this will be divided by the time step delta t so this is giving you the first or the time derivative so this is called backward time step because to calculate the temperature at an elevated time we are moving back to the previous time step that is why this is backward time now in the central space for the second order spatial derivative what we do we take the points at the elevated time steps that means all the points will be taken here so you see tx plus delta x so this is the point tx minus delta x this is the point and tx this is the point but all are taken at elevated t plus delta t t plus delta t and t plus delta t time steps so when i plug back these two discretized derivatives in the main equation which i have shown earlier then you can see i have taken this part and kept it here and the central difference part here there will be an alpha there is a mixed mistake so we will have an alpha here so then what i am doing this delta t i am taking here so delta t alpha by delta x square so this is the constant value and from uh, now onwards we will be denoting this constant value by r so now the target is to calculate the temperature at this point that is tx comma t so we keep this in the left hand side and all other terms we are sending to the right hand side if you want to do it you just, you can pause the video and try to put back in the in the equation heat transfer equation and uh, you can have a look whether this equation is coming or not now this tx t plus delta t or x plus delta x this is only valid when we are looking at only three points or four points but when we come to here we want to do calculations for all the grid points then what we do we will drop the indexing by delta x or delta t will be using uh, using ij say this point the temperature will be indicated by tij so at an elevated space it will be indicated by ti plus 1 comma j for this case this is basically j plus 1 because this is also an elevated time step so this is basically t i j comma one j plus 1 this point is t i comma j this point would be t i plus 1 comma j plus 1 so now if i do that basically a, i am replacing x by i x plus delta x by i plus 1 t by j and t plus delta t by j plus 1 if we do that then we are getting the temperature at i comma j that is the this point with respect to the temperatures at an elevated time step you can see here everything is coming at j plus 1 so this equation actually you cannot solve this equation because you can see in this particular equation you have how many unknowns this j plus 1 is unknown this j plus 1 is unknown and this j plus 1 is also unknown so only t i j is known so in this particular equation a single equation you have three unknowns and one known so this equation is not solvable so what you can do if you have many such equations and if those set of equations satisfy the degree of freedom then we can be able to solve it so this is the strategy we will be using to get the temperatures at every grid point so what we will be doing we will be calculating this discretized form for every possible points and every possible points will give you individual algebraic equations so we'll have a bunch of or a set of algebraic equations and then we'll try to solve it by some matrix methodology or something else so we try to go into more detail 
in order to understand the BTCS method by heart. So what we do, let me just tell you, let me index the grid points. So once we go in the horizontal direction, so the first point will indicate by 0, the second point will be by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and ultimately 8. So basically we have 9 grid points along the x direction and similarly we have taken 9 grid points along the y direction and it also starts from 0 and goes up to 8. So this particular square is a 9 by 9 grid point matrix and we have to solve for this many numbers because the uh, temperatures in the left hand side points, right hand side points and the bottom line are known. So we are basically solving this box and also these points you need to solve because we also don't know the temperature of these points. So basically we will be solving for this inner grid which is shown by the green shaded zone and also we have to solve for these points then we will be knowing the temperature of all the grid points. Now, this particular equation is coming from the index equation which we have calculated in this in the previous slide. So, this particular equation I have taken here. So, you can look at this equation once. Now, my point is suppose I want to calculate the temperature of 1 comma 1 point. So, which one is my 1 comma 1 point? So, this is 1, this is 1. So, this is the 1 comma 1 point. So I replace I by 1, also J by 1. So you just follow this. So T11, so it becomes T11. The next one becomes I plus 1, that means 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1, that is T22. So I wrote T22 multiplied by minus R, it was there. 1 plus 2R, Tij plus 1. So I is 1, so 1 comma 1 plus 1, 2. So T12. And again this one Ti minus 1, so I is equal to 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0, J plus 1 would be 1 plus 1, 2, so T is 0, 2. Now try to locate those points, so T11 which point? This is the point T11 indicated by this blue point. T22 which point? This is the red point indicated by the red circle and this is matching with I mean, uh, you have to match this red circle here and here. So this is the point T22. Now you, we go to the cyan co color. So here you can see T12. So this point is T12. And then the green color. So you can see here this is T. Actually this is T02, uh, basically this is T, actually we are, uh, we have indicated this triangle for this particular one. So you can see T21, basically this point is T21, this point is T32, this point is T22 and this is T12. So we have basically shown the triangle for this particular equation. Similarly, we, we can actually show this triangle by, so it will be this, this triangle. If you just follow me, so this is the triangle, but we have actually shown the triangle for the second line. You can pause the video and you can just look around and then you will be understanding better. So we have actually shown this particular point. Now, if we want to show this point, then we have to do like this we have to go there similarly if we keep on moving we will be getting temperature at T11, T21, T31 then it will be T41, 51, 61 and then 70. I have not written all the equations but as you move like this you will be getting T41, T51, T61, T71 and once you get this, then you can go to the next step that is that is the next row. So, and this is how you can calculate, start calculating from the next row.
so we have actually set the equations all the equations are now set so we go to the next slide yeah so whatever equation we have shown here we have just copied this particular equations and we have just pasted here now what we will be doing we will be rearranging the equations so that so before we rearrange uh, just try to look at in this particular case the time steps are the past time and if you see in the right hand side all the time steps are at an elevated time so it you can see the time index is always 2 2 2 but here it is 1 similarly in this case also the time index is 1 here but all other in the right hand sides are 2 so whatever you have in the right hand side that is an elevated time step and that is why I have written j plus 1 time step and this is in the past time step that is that is j time so we are rearranging those equations just try to follow me so for this particular equation so what I have done is I have taken these things in the left hand side so this two you can see if we take this in the left hand side it will become r t22 so this will be positive uh, basically yeah so we need to change it just let us do it here so you can see the t11 i kept it here so in the right hand side so it will be okay yeah so this is actually correct if you just fall try to follow this t11 it was there i have only written in the right hand side and this particular term rt02 i have taken this side so it has be become from minus to plus so plus r t02 i am just writing this part in the right hand side and this part in the le left hand side similarly i have done for this one also i have written this part in the left hand side and i have written this part in the right hand side so i have done these things for all the equations and then i will be expressing this in terms of a matrix so what i want to tell you is uh, if you just do this discretization for each grid point you will be getting a, an equation and similarly if i go back here so if i just hover from here to here how many points we have one two three four five six seven so basically we will be ending up with 7 equation which I have already shown 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we will have 7 equations. Now we will be forming the matrix now. So what I have done, so this particular part I have again copied and I have uh, written it here. So basically this particular set of equation can be expressed by this matrix form that is A matrix multiplied by Tj plus 1 that is at an elevated time step. So what is our role? Our role is you can see now in the left hand side after rearranging in the left hand side everything is at an elevated time step. So you can see the index at 2. So in the left hand side all the time index are 2 and in the right hand side all the time index are 1 so in generic form what i have written a t j plus 1 so what is the a matrix a matrix is nothing but the coefficient matrix of those temperature values so this particular matrix we want to create so for that what we so this particular term t j plus 1 for different points so you can see elevated time step always the second index is 2 and the first index we are varying 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 why 7 because I have shown in the box we are calculating for 7 grid points so the temperature at those 7 grid points are T11, T22, T32, T33, 
फोर टू अप टू टी सेवन टू एंड दिस पार्ट दिस इज द टी जे सो एट दिस द पास टाइम स्टेप एंड दैट्स वाई यू कैन सी वन 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 सो द सेकेंड इंडेक्स इज ऑलवेज वन एंड देर कुड बी सम कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू कमिंग आई विल शो यू सो दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट द राइट हैंड साइड पार्ट इज दिस टू कॉलम्स and this is the thing we have written here now we want to show you how exactly we form the matrix so you look at this equation so with t1 1 2 we have a coefficient 1 plus 2 r and with t2 2 we have a coefficient minus r so what we do so we write those index 1 2 indicates t1 2 2 2 3 so we have written the index now you can see from this equation what we can do so it is coming t with t 1 to 1 plus 2 r is coming so we have written 1 plus 2 r with t 2 to this one minus r is coming so we have written minus r and you can see there are no other terms so t 3 to t 4 to all have zero coefficients that's why i have written zero now let us move to the next equation So in the next equation, you can see with t two two we have one plus two r. So with t two two we have written one plus two r, and you can see with t three two we have minus r. We have written minus r with t three two, and similarly we have t one two. So this is the box for t one two, and the coefficient is minus r. So we have written minus r. There is no other term. So we put 0 0 0 now we go to the third equation in the third equation you can see with there is no t1 2 and that is why we have written 0 there is t2 2 in the third equation yeah this is t2 2 and we have minus r coefficient so we put minus r similarly it has t3 2 if you see t3 2 that is 1 plus 2 r so we have written 1 plus 2 r similarly we have t42 so t42 the coefficient is minus r we have written minus r so we have we 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 have to keep doing it and then i'll show you for the last one so for the last one again this is t72 so you can see t72 the coefficient is 1 plus 2r we have written that this is t62 so this is t62 we have minus r we have written and for the first and the last we have additional t02 in the right hand side so we have written this t02 in the right hand side and for the last one we have t82 in the right hand side so we have written t82 so basically there will be an r associated with it so this would not be only t02 it would be basically r into t02 so we can write r into t02 here sorry here also r into yeah so now this is perfect so our job is to so this is a matrix so our job would be to express this btcs set of equations with those matrix term and then solve this matrix in order to get get the points those are the points t11 t22 so this matrix form can be solved by any methodologies of linear algebra solution in the next video we'll be uh, writing a code in python to solve this set of equations now before i stop today's video let me just let us just look at the nature of this equation you can see this is a diagonal equation in this diagonal always we find 1 plus 2 r and the next i mean adjacent two diagonals we always get minus r minus r minus r so this is called a tri diagonal matrix and there are various methodologies various schemes to solve a tri diagonal matrix we will keep on uploading videos where we talk about various schemes so again i'm telling in the next video we will be code we will be coding with python for this btcs schemes again i'll be uploading all the codes which i am 
I'm, I'll be showing in the videos and you'll be able to download those codes and learn from there. So thank you. If you are liking our videos, do subscribe to our channel and share those videos with your peers.